Hi, it's Thomas again from Superstock. Today I'm going to show you how to tune your motor. So for this, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need the motorizer, or you can use the hot gluing tunalizer, a battery, tools to adjust the motor, and your preferred motor. You can't use the Sky RC uh, motor checker as there's certain measurements that that uh, device doesn't provide. I'll show you what we're going to go through. I'm going to go through how a motor makes power, shimming a motor, timing and what it does, the actual tuning of the motor, final touches to the motor, soldering a motor and FDR setting. So how does a motor make power? A motor makes power through torque, through power and through RPM. FDR also assists in producing speed, but the motor essentially does it in two ways. So you can't have a motor that produces no RPM or very little RPM to be a motor that produces a lot of top end speed. Because as torque drops off, power or RPM needs to replace it to keep the motor moving. So often people will think that they can simply gear a torquing motor to produce top end, but that's not true because once torque falls off, there's nothing moving the motor and creating momentum to move the tires. And the only way to get top end speed is to get revolutions per minute. And for that, the motor itself has to spin quickly. The other thing is FDR. So FDR does assist in, in producing top end and it does assist in making the car feel like they're producing torque, but it only does so within the window of torque and power that the motor has. The motor, if the motor doesn't produce torque or if it doesn't produce power, you're not going to get torque and RPM and torque and top end. So a good motor needs to have all of these things. Shimming a motor. Shimming is really important because what shimming does is it controls what is the end play. And there's only a little bit of end play there, but shimming is important for two things. The gap between the rotor and the sensor board, and that determines the final numbers that you will get uh, for each phase. If it's too close, it can be out. If it's too far, it can be out. And it also, the end point allows the rotor to naturally sit in its preferred position and it stops the motor from binding. If you shim it too close, you won't get the correct power or torque. And if you shim it too far, you lose power and torque. So what are the things that we want to take home with that? That you space it correctly, that you use also Teflon shims. Teflon shims allows it to move freely without any friction. The correct end play, and you make sure that the gap that the rotor has to the sensor board is correct. And you'll have to play around with that and find the correct sp uh, spacing for your motor. Timing and what it does. So timing is the movement that you have here on the motor, as you can see. Most people will adjust this thinking that timing is up some sort of endless source of more power. But that's not true because as you go higher in the timing, you are using more amps. And more amps will mean more power drained from your battery, which means that you will dump towards the end of the run. It also means the motor gets hot. And if it's too low, you're not using the motor to its biggest capacity or most capacity. So you have to find the spot that works the best. Timing should be something, in my opinion, that you kind of just set and forget, and then you use FDR to suit the track that you're on. And I'll explain why I feel timing has to be a set and forget, as opposed to simply just ramping it up and down in some of the next few um, topics that we go through. Next one is tuning a motor. This is a, takes a bit of time, so if you can just come around here, I'll show you how to do it. So here's a motor I've tuned earlier. If we just get really close here and we can see the numbers. So it's revving at 19,111. Current draw is 2.74 amps, KV2579. Most people would tune to current draw. That's incorrect because current draw is what the entire motor is pulling in reference to current. Now, here's the thing. People use, usually say, oh, six amps is the correct setting you have to set your motor at. But if you set six amps to current, what happens is your phase amps 
goes through the roof. It goes to eight, nine, maybe even 10 amps per phase. What you should be doing is tuning six amps per phase, which equates to roughly maybe two, seven, two, eight on a hobby wing. Why is that? Because phase amps is how much amps is going into each individual phase of the motor. An RC 10 scale motor has three phases. You need to measure the amperage into each phase. I tried my best to get this as close to six as possible. As you can see, this is five, nine, three. What I normally do is if I'm over six, I will grab whatever amount is on that highest number and I'll add it to the lowest. And if it roughly adds to six, I leave it. So here, this would be 599. That's fine for me. Keep in mind, this is a high torque rotor. For this motor specifically, it ended up being roughly 41.3 timing on the end bell. I don't pay attention to timing too much. I just set it to six amps per phase and I just leave it. And then I set my FDR to suit the track. As you can see here, uh, one of my phases is a bit out. The sensor board is a bit wrong. If I wanted to, I could move the sole of that sensor board and or sensor and move it on the board, but I don't have those skills. So I don't really ever muck around with that. If I could, I could probably get them all of 40. And what would happen then is all of these phase amps would be even closer together than what it is now, which means that the motor sensors are aligned they're all pulling the same amount of phase amps, which potentially means better power output. The other thing you can look at here is asymmetry of this rotor is quite asymmetrical. I kind of don't pay too much attention to that. All I look at is RPM. For a high torque rotor, this is pretty high RPM. A high torque rotor is generally 18.8, which tells me this rotor is maybe not too strong. When I go on a big track, I want this to be around 19.800. There's other ways of getting more RPM, but I won't tell you in this video. I'll tell you in another video and I'll call it super secrets or something like that. Oh, let me show you something. Let me put this to 48 timing, which you might hear a lot of people often set their motors to. I want to show you how incredibly high amperage per phase amp you get when you do this and why this is incorrect. But here's a problem. Yes, you do produce more RPM, 500 roughly more. Your current draw is 3.29. If you're tuning this and thinking that six at current amp is correct, you're completely wrong. Because look what happens now. Phase amp is seven amps and that's at 48 timing. You're going to get drop off and fade probably in the four minute mark. And the problem with this is that you're not going to have consistent lap times. When you look at the hobby wing stock timing, the stock timing, in fact, the stock timing is actually, hobby wing actually has stock timing at roughly six amps per phase. So when you get a motor, the stock timing is roughly correct depending on whether you run a high torque or a standard rotor, you will have to change it. For this motor, because it's a high torque, wanted slightly lesser timing compared to stock. And there's a few other tricks here. Once you have your motor set to the correct timing, you've shimmed it correctly so that the, the sensor boards are as close to, as possible to each other. The other thing I do as well is on the motorizer, you have continuous drive or a constant drive sensor and magnet test. What I like to do is I continuously run the motor and I go down to phase amps. What I do is I loosen the, the motor can screws so I, to see if I can get the sensor boards to align a little bit better. So just by loosening it there, potentially it's a little bit better. You don't want one screw to be significantly tighter than the other two because then what happens is the can is aligned and the bearings are not running true. I might muck around a little bit with also the sensor board screws and you never really over tighten everything. You have to remember that there's a bearing here and a bearing here and they all have to be aligned. I'll rerun the motor. And I've gained a few RPM by doing that potentially. And as you can see, it's roughly there. I would say that's perfect. It's maybe 0.2 over. I don't think that's a big issue. So there you go. Okay, so here's my car. We're gonna solder it up. As you can see, soldering iron at 430. I will clean my tip. If your tip is a bit brown, you can tin your tip. And with your motor wires, try to cut it so it's about, about two to three mil only exposed. This stops uh, the soldering wicking down. Use some high quality hi-fi solder with a high silver content. This one has 10% silver. I will pre-warm the cable. 
and then I push it down. And let it stay there. Okay, so now you've set your timing of your motor, you've shimmed it correctly, you've tuned it correctly, you've soldered it up correctly. If you've watched the other video, you've also set your ESC up correctly. The now all that's left is FDR. For FDR, obviously, it's different for every truck. What you have to keep in mind though is that a hot motor is not a good motor. So make sure you have a high quality fan like the Team Powers fan that I have here with a shroud that we've designed. You want a fan that pushes a lot of air. The Team Powers and the Zombie Hyper are the two fans that push the most air in the market with the Team Powers being lighter than the Zombie even when you use a shroud such as a super stock shroud. There should be no noticeable drop off in the performance of the engine from the start of a race to the end of the race except for changes obviously in battery voltage. The last thing I would suggest, especially with 21 turn, run the smallest possible spur gear that you can. So the smaller the better because then that means you don't have to run a big pinion. So that's it, your motor set, you're ready to race. Anyway, that's it from me. Uh, it's Thomas from Superstock signing out and I'll see you at the track.